Hello and welcome to the first episode of Haskell Rank. Haskell Rank is the series on the Zolling channel where we solve a couple of programming problems each episode, but in Haskell. We're usually going to solve Hacker Rank problems. That's where the, the name comes from, the ha Haskell Rank and stuff. But maybe in the future we may try other platforms as well, because besides Hacker Rank, there's lots of them, thousands of them. Maybe not thousands, but hundreds. The idea of the series is to teach Haskell and function programming through showing examples instead of giving well-structured material. Basically, I show you solutions and you pick up on patterns, like a neural network. We're mostly going to solve simple problems, but maybe in the future we will try a more advanced algorithms. The series won't have any particular schedule. Each episode is ready when it's ready. So, what is Hacker Rank and how it works? Basically, you have a set of problems, a set of challenges, and for each challenge, you write a simple command line program that reads data from standard input and prints the solution on standard output. You submit the source code of your program to the system. The system compiles your program and runs it through the set of predefined tests. On each test, the system checks whether your program prints out the correct solution. The system also pays attention to how how much time your program takes to print out the solution and how much memory it consumes. If all of the tests pass within the time and memory limitations, the problem is considered solved. So let's just try to solve something. They have a problem called solve me first. Basically, this problem is to show how the system works and stuff. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you have to read two numbers from standard input and print their sum. You can actually choose several languages. There's like actually a lot of them, but we're gonna use Haskell. So they also provide you some kind of a template. They also provide a solution. And that template is so weird. Like, I can't understand why they do that, because they want to show you a familiar style of programming, basically imperative programming. But this is not how you usually program in Haskell. Haskell is about uh, declarative programming, not imperative one. So we're going to actually remove all of that and uh, write it from scratch. To solve that problem, we will need a couple of interesting functions. The first function that we will need is called interact. That function takes a another function as the first argument and produces some side effect. You see, the function it takes is actually a function from one string to another string. And the input string of the function is actually standard input of the program. And the output function is the standard output of the program. So with this function, you can actually write interactive Haskell programs in a declarative way. So let's actually start implementing our solution. Another interesting function, or rather operator, is the dollar operator. You've probably seen that operator a lot in Haskell programs. I think this is the most confusing operator in Haskell because it solves a really bizarre problem. In functional programming, what is a functional programming? Functional programming is programming through composing pure functions, right? So that means generally functional programming looks like applying several functions and so on. Applying function like that produces is pretty dirty code in the sense that it's cluttered with parentheses. One of the way to solve that is to implement an operator that takes a function as the first argument and some value as the second argument and just applies function to that argument. And with this operator, you can rewrite this expression like so. That's it. That's the point of this operator. The dollar operator is needed to rewrite this code like that. And we're going to use that operator to separate the interact from its argument. Another interesting operator that we will need is the functional composition operator. This one is a little bit more interesting because it actually mimics the functional composition from math. So yeah, initially you have two functions, f and g, and with functional composition, you produce another function, which basically composes those functions together, which is going to be really useful in our case, because interact takes a function as an argument, and we can produce that function by composing several other functions. Let's actually find out what functions we need to compose to solve the problem. Just to remind ourselves what problem we have to solve. We have to read two numbers from standard input and add them together and print out the result. As an input, we have a string. So the first thing we have to do, we have to split that that string by words. And Haskell has a really interesting function called words. As you can see, this function takes a single string and produces a list of strings. Let's actually check how it works. So you see, I apply it to a single string with three words, and this function produces a list of three elements. The input of the program is going to look like that. 
and we're going to destructurize it into two elements. Let's put that function as the first argument of interact. This program is not going to compile because interact expect function that returns string, but this function returns the list of string. But we are going to compose this function with other functions to produce the desired result. The next step is to convert strings into numbers. Haskell has a really interesting function for doing that. It's called read. As you can see, this function takes string and produces some result which has a type class read. Basically, that means you have to specify the resulting type of read to actually make it convert some string to that type. For example, I provide string with five and I say that read should return integer. And as you can see, this entire expression returns integer. But we have not a single number. We have several of them. That means we have to take that list of two numbers and apply map to it. So there, there is an interesting function in Haskell called map, which allows you to specify a function, provide the list, and it will apply that function to each element of the list, producing a new list. So we create list of two strings, then we map it with read, and we say that the result should be list of integers. And as you can see, we get the list of integers. After that, we can just apply a function sum to the result. Function sum takes a bunch of numbers in a foldable container and produces the sum of them. Since sum already returns a number, we don't have to specify the return type. And after that, we have to convert that number back to a string. For that, we have a function called show, which takes something showable and returns a string of that. So yeah, this is pretty much the entire solution of the first solve me problem. So this is just an expression, but we actually have to convert it to a function, which we can put into interact. So for that, we take that entire expression and replace all of its dollar signs with functional composition. And let's try to submit that as the solution. You see, one line solution, one liner in Haskell, instead of several lines that they suggested us in the template. Super easy. Next problem, simple array sum. So basically, this is a more complex version of the previous problem, because in the previous problems we have to add two numbers, but here we add several of them. But what's interesting is that our solution scales to as many numbers as we want. The problem is, this particular problem has a different format. In the previous uh, problem, we knew that the input's gonna have two numbers, but here we can have several of them, so for the purpose of convenience, they give us the size of the array as the first number. But with our solution, we don't really need that, because words function doesn't really care how many numbers you give it, it will just split them. So that means we have to do our usual words operation, but we have to remove the first element. How to remove the first element? Haskell has a pretty interesting function. All of the functions in Haskell are pretty interesting, which is called tail. Function tail takes a list and returns another list. But what it does, it actually removes the first element and returns the tail of the list. So to actually solve that problem, what we have to do, we have to take our first solution of the previous problem and put tail here. So as you can see, this denotes operations in reverse order. First, we split words, then we remove the first element, then we convert string elements to numbers, then we sum them, and then we convert them back to strings. So let's see how it works. And this is the template they suggest us to use to solve the problem, when we can use just one line. This is ridiculous. And you see, just like that, we solved another problem. We just added another function to the composition and it's a completely different solution. So that's the power of Haskell. But as you can see, nobody can actually appreciate that power. So anyway, I think I want to take another warm up problem just to show you. There is another interesting one called a very big sum, which is basically modification of this one. The only modification is that the result may overflow integer. So basically it's a long arithmetic problem. But in Haskell, the type integer has an arbitrary precision. So that means it automatically scales when the sum grows. That means we can use the solution from the previous problem without any modifications and just solve that problem, you see? <laughs> so long arithmetic is built in into Haskell. We just solve three problems, how about that?